The Sunday of Week 5 Psalm 126 When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Imagine yourself a small child, peacefully at home with your parents and siblings, when suddenly the soldiers come. Rough hands, arrogant voices, everybody out, no time to pack, line up, hurry up, we're out of here. A few men try to resist, swords flash, women scream, unburied bodies in the village street. Then the long dusty journey across the desert. You can still remember 70 years later, the daytime heat and the chilly nights. At last you reach a great city where you're treated as curiosities. Oh, they finally caught up with you, silly Judeans, did they? Well, you're going to have fun singing your fancy songs here. Eventually the little clusters of families find somewhere to live. They do their best to remember, to remember, to tell the stories, to keep the commandments, to forge strong bonds, as you only really do when life's like that. And yes, to sing the songs, even though they taste bitter in the mouth when you think of Jerusalem in ruins. You remember now the years that followed, praying, fasting, studying, growing up, marrying, having children, still tasting the bitterness and wondering why you bother going on hoping. But everybody knows that exiles don't return. The dream is over. Better just get used to being in a new place. Forget your old culture. You've got to go back. You've got to go on, not back. All peoples think they're special and then discover that it's just a grandiose fantasy. But still you and quite a few others go on praying and remembering and singing. And then it hardly seems possible But now at last, in your mid-century, 70s, it's happened. A new king with a new policy. The Judeans are to go home. They must rebuild their temple. This is amazing. The Lord has visited his people. Now it's time for a new song. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Laughter in our mouths songs of joy on our tongues, and everybody looking on and saying, their God has done great things for them. Restoration, forgiveness, new starts. These are the greatest moments in the world, even if you have to wait a lifetime for them to come. But then the psalm turns a corner and looks at projects still unfinished, sorrows still unhealed. Do it again, gracious Lord, You brought us back. It was impossible, but you did it. Now turn things around again for us. Once again, we're sowing in tears, but we may reap with shouts of joy. From exile and return to seed time and harvest, but it's the same picture. This is a picture we can make our own as we go through Lent, just as Jesus made it his own as he went through his own Lent. Speaking of seeds being strangely and sadly sown so that a great harvest might come up. Today, reflect about this. Have there been moments in your life when suddenly everything turned round for you or for somebody else? When tears or a long time of difficulty gave way to shouts of joy? If there have, then today could be a good day to remember them and thank God for them.